Buddy has talked about the six locations that First Presbyterian Church has had. I think First Presbyterian has migrated more often than any other Presbyterian church, maybe any other church in Richmond. I'm going to try to cover briefly the 12 senior pastors, counting Charlie, that we have had over the 198 years history of the church. Uh, the first pastor, let's see if we can get this, okay, that's John Holt Rice. I think everybody knows John Holt Rice. His portrait hangs over the fireplace uh, in the parlor. Uh, in 1812, John Holt Rice came from a very prominent Presbyterian family. He had a church in Charlotte County, the Cub Creek Presbyterian Church. But he was induced to come to Richmond to organize a Presbyterian church. Um, he was known as an indefatigable worker. He really jeopardized his own health, uh, taking on as many obligations as he took on. It's interesting to me, in 1822, Rice was offered the presidency of Princeton College. He turned that offer down. Uh, Dr. E.T. Thompson says that Rice wrote at the time, speaking of his position at First Church, here, my nominal salary is $2,000. My real one is $1,600 very irregularly paid. <laughs> and my expenses are beyond my income. At Princeton, I should get $2,500 very punctually paid. But people would say, Northern Gold bought him, and thus my influence in the South would be diminished, if, if not destroyed. So he, t he turned down the Princeton offer. In 1823, Rice was offered the position of Chair of Theology at the new Union Theological Seminary at Hampton Sydney College. He wrote to the session that uh, with deep anguish of spirit, he would relinquish his position to take the new position at uh, Union Theological at Hampton, Sydney. If, if you're like me, if you come in the parking lot entrance and leave the parking lot entrance, you, you can live a long time around here without going to the Cary Street entrance. There is a wonderful memorial to John Holt Rice in the Cary Street entrance, I would urge everybody to take a moment to study that. The second pastor was William Jessup Armstrong. He was here for 10 years, 1824 to 1834. He came from the First Presbyterian Church of Trenton, New Jersey. You might ask yourself, how in the world would we find a minister from Trenton, New Jersey? The answer was pretty simple. John Holt Rice had recommended him. Uh, Jessup was known as an ardent believer in missions. He resigned his position with First Church in 1834 to become the secretary of the Board of Foreign Missions for the East Hanover Presbytery. He left that job to become secretary of the American Board of Commissioners for Foreign Missions. That was a huge job at that time and it required him to move to New York. Uh, he was lost at sea in 1836 on a voyage from Boston to New York. The, the wonderful portrait of him in our card, and this is interesting to me, there's a story here, I wish I knew more about it. The portrait that we have of Dr. Armstrong was painted in 1961 by David Silvette. A lot of people here know a lot more about art than I do, but David Silvette was the man, uh, certainly in the Mid-Atlantic in that period. And it's, it's an interesting story to me how it came, how we came to get David Silvette to do that portrait. I'm going to come back to this point later on. The third minister was William Swan Plumer. He was a very prominent minister in Richmond. He was here uh, for a 12-year period. 
during the time that he was here, there was a schism in the Presbyterian Church. Now, I've got John Trotty sitting here. Don't ask me any of the particulars. <laughs> but this was not just a problem at First Presbyterian Church. This was a schism that rent the Presbyterian Church up and down the eastern seaboard, the old side versus the new side. And there was a tremendous split within First Presbyterian. Uh, Dr. Plumer was an old sider. The session and a minority of the congregation uh, developed very strong new side leanings, uh, but a majority, and they wanted to dissolve the bonds of his pastorate, but they could not get a majority of the congregation to agree. Uh, about 90 people left at that time to start the fourth Presbyterian church. But Plumer was a, again, he was a prominent and dominant figure. He was a very powerful uh, person, and he drew uh, a, a number of new members into First Presbyterian. In 1845, with his blessing, we sent 45 of those members off to start a new Presbyterian church in the West End, that was the Second Presbyterian Church at Fifth and Franklin. Plumer <laughs> um, <laughs> resigned in 1846 to accept a call in Baltimore, Maryland, but at his request uh, on his death, his body was brought back and buried in Hollywood Cemetery. The fourth pastor was Thomas Werner Moore. He was here for 21 years through the Civil War, uh, First Presbyterian, while he was here, moved to the location at 10th and Capitol Streets. Uh, Blanton's History of Second Presbyterian, which, by the way, if you're looking for a history of First Presbyterian, the best book in print is Wyndham Blanton's History of Second Presbyterian Church. It has a marvelous account of First Presbyterian. Uh, Blanton says that Moore's winning ways, his sweet graciousness, his gentle humor made him welcome in any and all society. Very interesting to me, a lot of you all may know Nelson Langford, who's a longtime employee at the Virginia Historical Society. Nelson wrote a book several years ago about the last years of the Civil War in Richmond. The book is called Richmond Burning. He tells this story in, in that book. He says, Moses Hogue's wife, Susan, fumed at a sermon she heard on the assassination of Lincoln. The remarks were made by the Reverend Dr. Thomas Moore, minister of First Presbyterian Church. During the war, the scholarly Pennsylvania native had extended his pastoral care to include sick Union prisoners. When Moore heard of the assassination, he wrote that if Jefferson Davis had been shot, it would not have caused a fraction of the grief expressed in Richmond on the death of Lincoln. That sentiment must have crept into the sermon that so offended Hogue. Moore knew that he had made an unpopular statement. Provost Marshal Patrick, who had known the preacher before the war, said Moore came to him a few hours after giving the sermon and lamented that, quote, the women are all after me. <laughs> so Charlie, if the women all get after you, just remember you're in good company. Uh, Moore resigned in 1868 to accept a call to Nashville, Tennessee, to the first president in Nashville. The fifth pastor, Thomas Lewis Preston, was here for 15 years from 1868 to 1883 uh, through Reconstruction. The church during his pastorate remained at 10th and Capitol Streets. Uh, I really don't know much about him. There's one sentence in Blanton's history which says, there was never more harmony in the First Church congregation than during Dr. Preston's pastorate. Interesting to me, again, though, the portrait of Thomas Preston in the corridor was painted by David Silvette. 